Comic-Con, which is coming up. Always after I drink. Uh, November 9th and 10th. Oh, and what days are those? Uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yes, they are. Oh what are the, what are the be time? great if it was like Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> like, yeah, we're, yeah, it's we're, like yeah. a Monday and a, a, a Monday Thursday. And a Thursday. I don't really remember. <laughs> we open at 10 a.m., close at 2. <laughs> Hope you can make it. Take yep. off work. <laughs> what are the times for the shows? Uh, it's geez, okay. Um, so we, Long we added some some hours this year. So Saturday Ooh. is going to be eleven to seven. VIPs get in at ten thirty, and Sunday is going to be uh Sunday the tenth. It's going to be eleven to six, and again VIPs get in at ten thirty. Hell yeah! Yeah. So if you're not a VIP, you know, be a VIP. Yeah. Get, get better. Outfits. Our big 10th anniversary show. We we had our first show in 2014. Our first Twin Tiers Comic Con is it was in 2014. Mm -hmm. And it's not our 10th show because COVID. Ha -ha. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's our 10th anniversary of when we started. And we've got a whole bunch of different stuff planned. We have a big after party that we're doing on Saturday that you guys are going to be involved Hell with. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. we're going to be doing a uh, drink and draw and art fight and all sorts of fun stuff. And uh, before I was here, I was actually at the, the hotel that is hosting the event. And I was taste testing some drinks, some specialty cocktails for the yeah. evening. So, Can so people I... look forward to some good drinks? People can look forward to some good drinks. Do you have an Event Horizons? Horizons? We don't have Event Horizons. <laughs> no, we've got we've got Tub Girl. Uh, we've got Two Girls One Cup. We've got <laughs> are these real? Hold on, cake farts. Yeah. I need we, I need to know. Um, we have Meat Spin. Uh, we have... Don't Google any of these. <laughs> and for dessert, we're doing blue waffles, so it's gonna be fun. Oh my God. I think I just had a drink coming out of my nose. Oh man. If you didn't, yeah. if you weren't around like the early days of the internet, oh like ooh, you missed out on some yeah, prime, not out awful content. That was a time. Yeah, yeah. When when it was the the wild west on the internet. Yeah. I mean, it's, in some places it still is, but you know. Was... So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about Twitter's Comic Con. We're going to ask Kev some questions, we got and questions Kev is going to. We also have questions from some dipshits for you. Oh, great. Um, so we're going to ask you some questions. We're going to do a little trivia, like and then milky, you're going to also... Uh, milky John? or what, No. What no Milky Boy this time. Oh, Milky Boy. No. We obviously have done this <laughs> show every year since starting the podcast. So, sure. you know, we want to try and mix it up. We don't want the same show every time where you're just like, oh, come to do it, come to come, 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 do it, do it. We want actual fun, you know, good, <laughs> hilarious <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. We if just Kevin's speed you up when you talk. Show. I feel like last year we didn't talk about the show like no, at all. At all. <laughs> I think we did like ten. We're minutes already of, off yeah. to that start again. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're here for Twin Tiers Comic Con stuff, you've probably already tuned out. <laughs> Fifteen minute diatribe about how he can't eat at a restaurant. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, anyway, okay. So, all right, we're gonna talk about the show then and now, which is you know all the way back to like 2014 to. Mm. 2024. Mm -hmm. So uh, ten years of ten mm -hmm. C two. Yeah, ten years of T two C two. How do you feel about that? By the way, let's start with that really quick. <laughs> old, you... tired, <laughs> old, tired. Yeah. Um, and More you can or less. tell. You can ask this question if you want to. Did you have a kid when you started, or did you not have a kid yet in twenty? No. Uh, my daughter was born in twenty sixteen. She was okay. actually born. The day after Twin Tears Comic Con in twenty sixteen. No, I remember way. that. Like Carolyn was. Like very pregnant. Yeah, the 2016 show. <laughs> At the show, like, <laughs> everyone was prepped for that show of being like, Kevin might have. Yeah, to he's leave. not gonna be here, guys. <laughs> but you because, made it through the weekend. Yeah, we then... made it through the weekend, and then she was induced that Monday, so the Monday after the show. Wow. So and then my daughter was born early Tuesday morning. Wow. How much about that show do you remember? Um, some, some, some. Well, this is going to make this segment great. Oh, God. <laughs> is that the 2016 show we're asking about or 2014 no, we're, we're just going back. All right, let's start with this. Let's start with this. We're going to do some, some rapid fire stuff. So first thing. It's all a blur. This is going to be embarrassing. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. Uh, I'm going to be. For up. every. For every. Just make it up. For every like three questions that you get wrong, you have to tell us some sort of spoiler about the oh, 2 okay. 2 2 That's that? not, oh, no, I thought yeah. it going to be something gross. <laughs> um, all right. Take your shirt off. <laughs> Take your clothes off for every question you get wrong. All right. <laughs> Put it back on if you get another one wrong. <laughs> Hunters are right. like, yeah, that's right. Cry. <laughs> Drink your event horizon and cry. All right. <clears throat> Who 
was mm-hmm. the first celebrity guest at Twin Tiers Comic Con. Uh, I believe that was probably Mr. Lloyd Kaufman from Troma. Good old Lloyd. Uncle Lloyd. Yeah. yeah. The tip of his tongue. I miss wow. Lloyd. Yeah. He's a good dude. I wanted to get him back this year, but I think he's filming something and his schedule was a bit I, Yeah, there is something hectic. in production <laughs> so, right yeah. now. Love yeah, that would have been cool though. to get the first ever at the yeah. tunnel. Yeah. yeah. He was a sweetheart. So yeah. maybe Lloyd's next year. Lloyd's awesome. Maybe yeah. next year. He's, he's, he's fun still, to he, hang out with. And he'll never die. He'll be around for at least yeah. 150. So yeah. damn. That's what I've heard. Yeah. All right. Uh, Love you, Lloyd. He's not listening. <laughs> no, I mean, you could send it to him. You know, what I'm you know, if you like, comment, subscribe, and share, Kev, <laughs> we could reach more people. Anyway, uh, what year <laughs> What year did the con officially move to its current venue? Uh, 2019. Mm. Pre COVID. Pre COVID. Yeah, Just pre COVID. Yeah. Right about. It was, yeah, it was like four months before the world shut down. So, yeah. Because <laughs> we had had it in November of 2019. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. And then there and was then, a news report that was like, we're all going to die. Right. <laughs> yeah. A month later, they're like, somebody had sex with a bat or I don't know what, <laughs> oh what's going God. on. And then, and then you you're like, what? That? And you know, people are coughing in like China and Japan and stuff. I'm oh like, oh, God. okay. I guess we're dead. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. And then three months later, it's like, oh, but I got all these tickets to these things. No, <laughs> oh, okay. Has Twin Tears Com- hmm. Has Twin Tears Comic? I, I've, I'm done. Too it's many. Empty. Too many. Um, uh, has it always right. been in November? It is not. No, it's, no. it's moved around. Um, I think originally, this is one of the quick trivia questions, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I want to say originally it was it was in the summer. I think July, August, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, and we moved to November in 2019, and that and we we now we do it regularly on Veterans Day weekend, which. As often we are told, people don't know when that is. So that's November 11th. So it's when COD comes yeah. out, guys. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> don't you know? Yeah. So, which is actually going to be interesting. And I think 2026, because November 11th is going to be on a Wednesday. So we have to kind of figure out do we go the weekend before? Do we go the weekend after? We don't know. But um, one of the reasons was when we started in 2014 doing this, there was there were a lot of competing events in the summer. Yeah. And and not even just local events as well as comic conventions because we're not directly competing with like you know larger comic cons but when it comes to booking guests we are like yeah. you know we can't book somebody who's you know same thing is even happening now it like the more years that go by the more comic cons spring up and then die off and then keep springing up and dying off and um you know this year we're doing a show in November and there's so many shows that now do multiple shows a year they'll do a spring show and a fall show. And there's like, I think three or four shows that I know of that are like, there's a, there's a show in PA. There's a show, I think Motor City Comic Con is uh, the same weekend as us. So it's like, you can't, you can't escape it. You just yeah. have to pick a weekend and roll with Monster it. Monster Mania so, is a big yeah. one. We can't really do horror guests because of Monster Mania. Yeah. 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 Which is also sucks because like, I've been to a few Monster Manias and I love going to those. So I even, I emailed the showrunner of Monster Mania and I was like, hey, do you know when you're doing your show next next November yet? Because like I do a show in November too, and like it's not that I'm like worried about competing, but like I want to go to your show and I want it to yeah. not be at the same weekend as my show. <laughs> so like legitimately, I would like to go to your show. So please tell me when it is so I can schedule around it. Like I I will schedule around you. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's it is what it is. And and we were actually thinking about, you know, I was kind of reminiscing, uh a few weeks back about all the shows just in New York that, you know, have sprung up and disappeared within the past 10 years. There's been six or seven Syracuse shows that have come and gone. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. A lot of them are in bigger markets and and things like that, but it's, you know, I don't know. It's, it's weird how we're still here. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Next question. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Here we go. Did I answer that question? Yeah. 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 You answered that question. Okay. Enough. May I just cut it out if you didn't answer it? Yeah. <laughs> just cut the entire question out. Just right. fill it with beeps so it sounds like I'm just swearing on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All right. So here's a, here's a good one that I feel like you're not going to get, but we'll see. Um, oh, name the first fandom that had a dedicated cosplay group at the con, which I know you already said you're not too into the cosplays. You don't pay attention enough, but let's see if you can I answer I think it. I have an idea for this one. First oh. fandom. So wait, how do you know if this is right or not? <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> I've got a secret cheat sheet. The first fandom that had a cosplay group presence at the show. Yeah. 
and this is since 2014. Yeah. I'm not sure if I know that. I mean, I feel like it's maybe the Ghostbusters. Oh, there was a hmm. big Ghostbusters group, too. I was thinking of the DC one. Yeah, there's there was the a DC... big DC group for yeah. a while. There's the DC group. There was I, I was it was a toss up between that group, Ghostbusters, and one of the Star Wars group, like um Five O First or um the Mandal the the Mercs, the Mandalorian Mercs, Mercs. Mandalorian Mercs, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Those so guys we'll, we've so had the right answer. <laughs> uh you don't have an answer, do you? <laughs> uh it was Ghostbusters. You got it right. Yeah, good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. We'll move on to the next thing. Um, <laughs> time to celebrate your best moments and fan stories of, oh. of the years past, okay? Mm. Um, so how about you give us, try and share your top three favorite moments from the past 10 years. They could be memorable celebrity interactions, big reveals, or like standout panels, whatever. Your you're like top three things that have happened over the last 10 well, years. I definitely have one that comes to mind immediately. If he doesn't, then you can go. There, there are some moments from our 2015, 15, yeah, to our 2015 after party <laughs> that I can't mention uh -huh. <laughs> because those, you know, we we uh, we talk about them kind of socially, but never really <laughs> publicly. <laughs> um, so definitely come to the after party. Kevin O'Barr was there though, and uh, somebody got a very cool piece of fan art. Yeah, James one, was one in a lifetime. Um, no, I, actually, from that same show, it was cool that um, we actually got some press from his panel because he was talking about. Um, well, back then that was 2015. They were still trying to make a new Crow movie, <laughs> and it finally just came out. And now nobody wants to talk about it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he uh, he was talking about kind of where the process was with with that new Crow movie and and develop and working on the the original Crow movie and kind of what part he had in that and how he picked. I think he said he handpicked the soundtrack and like all that stuff, um, which again, like the Crow movie is like one of the best soundtracks. And uh, yeah, and so that was really cool. We got some press off that. And that was, that was neat. Um, which especially like in our second year was like, Oh, cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> people might know that we exist. Um, and even 10 years in, they still don't really know that we exist, but that's fine. um, Hey, I saw some angry comments. That means we're getting somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. If people are trolling us to the same degree that they troll, <laughs> like, I don't know, um, Niagara or Buffalo or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine made it yeah. like, Oh, cool. All press is good press. Yeah. And our little, 80,000 person uh, county. Um, yeah, that really is what it is, I think. Um, yeah, so that would be one. Uh, I guess the the after party in 2016 was pretty fun because that was um, basically Dana Snyder running a room uh, just talking about all of... Because he's done so many shows, so he was just telling us all these stories about other shows he's done that were just ridiculous. Um, ridiculous situations of him trying to get corral other guests and, you know, missed transportation issues and like all these just <laughs> crazy stories um so that was really fun and we're bringing him back this year so that's dana's awesome. so fun yeah he's a cool guy yeah dana snyder from uh well he's done many voices now but back then he was he was pretty much mostly known for being uh master shake on aqua teen hunger force mm -hmm. but now he's uh the ghost scratch on the ghost of molly mcgee which is a show that my daughter loves to watch on disney plus so He's done uh, quite a few things since then. You um, get one Disney Plus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only got one. Um, yeah, what was it? I have to name three? Yeah, we got one more. Um, one more. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I've got one. Okay, I won't name the guest, but there was a guest that I may have uh, uh, smoked a little green with, <laughs> and that was fun. That's very memorable. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm mostly in it for, uh, the social aspects with, with the guests and also, um, kind of seeing, which is one of the reasons that I hate not having all of my stuff together is that I like to actually enjoy the show and kind of see other people enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm in it for. Um, you know, it's never really like, oh, is this working? Is that working? It's just like, if people are there and like, they're really enjoying themselves and I'm like, that feels pretty awesome. Yeah. Then I can just kind of like look around and be like, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> like, this is great. <laughs> um, and then, you know, you have all the moments with the, with the, the guests and things like that, which you don't really get doing anything else. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Speaking of guests, think, um, oh no, go ahead. You saw you had a moment. I forgot. I, did. I have yeah. two actually. I think the most yeah, nerve wracking one that we had to experience was trying to bring Optimus into the arena. Oh yeah. I think we've heard full size yeah. 18 wheeler that we had to like squeeze through an entryway yeah. made for Zambonis. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've had so many vehicle, like close calls and yeah. things like that. We had even here at the, at the mall doing it at the, their event center. They don't have like, uh, in that, that storefront or storefront, that event space, they don't have like a loading area or anything like that. So they have to bring the vehicles in from like down the hall and through like these doors that open to the outside and then they have to like use ramps to get them down the stairs because there's no ramps that the cars could fit down so they're like literally like wooden ramps or metal ramps and some of those are like you know depending on the vehicle like if it's a clearance is like a half an inch (laughs) like if it's a long batmobile and you're watching like it like go right down to the stair and you're like oh my god don't (laughs) like yeah, because and not even just like oh, it's gonna ruin like the experience for the weekend, but you're just like don't damage that car. I don't know what happens if that thing gets damaged. Yep. <laughs> like, I I can't uh, afford any of this. So yeah, yeah. it's but yeah. I think uh, and then the coolest one was going to breakfast at Cracker Barrel with Jake the Snake Roberts and just watching him order everything on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, it That's was before his flight out. We uh we all went to breakfast with him at Cracker Barrel, and he literally just went down the menu, and it was like, I'll have two of these, I'll have four of these. Shut <laughs> up. Just like That's a amazing. whole table. And he ate the whole food. thing? Yeah. Holy. <laughs> bring that guy to Hot Pot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy I'm shit. I'm sad I missed that. I must have been working, I think. Yeah, but, I think um... it was me and Mike and Heather and um, Aaron, and That's that fantastic. was fun. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> That's great. You know, I really thought one of your top stories would have been, you know, I had my child two days after, but you know, ah, that's, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the show was in the rear view mirror at that point. Like as soon as it's over, I'm not thinking about it anymore. It's Damn. on to the next one. On to the next one. I mean, they overlap. I'm booking guests for next year. So it's like, you know, uh, well, actually it's a good thing you bring up guests. I was about to ask the next thing would be, how do you feel that the guest appearances or the guests that you've gotten over time have do you think they've gotten better they've gotten worse how do you feel that the experience of when you were like the first show calling up to have your first guest like the nervousness you had to like now and like how you feel that experience has changed yeah it's um i mean it's always it's always kind of a crapshoot in a way um (laughs) because we're not like you know, we're, we're not in a giant market we we don't have, you know, 750,000 people in Monroe County and we don't have, I mean, what's, what's Tompkins like 500,000 people or no, no, I'm, I'm not, not Tompkins. I'm thinking of like Onondaga's like 500,000 people, mm, okay. but it's like, you know, we, we've got a much smaller market than that. And so it's all about trying to basically pull people in. Um, cause I was always saying from the beginning, like it, from the beginning, building it up, it was like trying to get local people to know what the show is and, and come and, and enjoy it and all that. And then from then on, it became like, all right, so the people who live around us, like most of them should hopefully know that we exist by now. And now I'm trying to pull more people in so that they can help, you know, maybe get people from Buffalo, Rochester, Albany and Syracuse to kind of come into our little area and hopefully spend some money and and help our, you know, local economy go. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's always kind of a crapshoot where we don't have this huge market and we're not a giant show. So it's like, we never know how a guest is going to play like with the, with the audience. If, if we book them and we're like, I think that'll go well. Like we, we think we've had guests where, you know, we, we think it's going to go well. And then, you know, they, they get here and I mean, they're fine, but it's just like, for some reason there, there, there's not like, uh, uh, you know, there's no, nobody's clamoring to meet them. Nobody's, you know, they don't do as well as we, as we hope that they would. And that, that thing sort of happens. Um, and also you never really know who you're getting with some guests, whether they're celebrities, whether they're, you know, you know, just regular vendors or guests or whatnot. It's just like, there there's i mean joey can attest to this there's there's a certain uh you know behavior and a skill set that you need to run a booth at a a convention yep where like if you're not engaging with the people who come up to your table then you're probably not going to sell as much as the person who's more outgoing you know sitting next to you and then they'll be talking about how well they did the show and you'll be like i only made 50 bucks and it's like well because you're just a lot of times it comes down to who that person's with too like if if you can have somebody who's like not engaging but if their agent is good they'll still right you know they'll still make their money but then you get you get you'll get people who are just like 
you don't know why they're there. Like it's right. clearly a burden for them right. to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's tough for us because a lot of celebrities, like, and a lot of guests and stuff that they might work on an appearance fee, they might work on a guarantee. And it's like, you know, some people come into it where they're like, well, we're going to get paid either way. Like it doesn't matter. But I'm like, yeah, well, it matters to me. Cause like, I want people to like come and have fun and have a good experience with you. And yeah, if you're just going to sit there and like, look at your phone or look down at the table, like that's not, then we don't want you back cool for me. Yeah. 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 Whereas, you know, you might, like Joey said, you might have a celebrity who maybe is a little introverted and maybe they don't really like, you know, put themselves out there, but they might have an agent who stands in front of the table and like yeah. talks to people when they approach and, you know, things like that. So it's, you have to find the right balance. Even if it's, you know, some people are like chaotic and they're disorganized and they have that hand to sort of guide them. Yeah. They're like, oh, hey, you need to come over here and do this photo or this right. autograph. And then, then, you know, they'll guide them to meet the person. And, right. But yeah, you there's certain people who need that and there's certain people who can run their tables themselves. And yeah, I think it's important to have that. And like, I know we've had some really good agents through the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so. and, and the difference between a, uh, a guest, I, I won't even say celebrity, like the difference between a guest engaging or not engaging. And if it's somebody that we're paying to bring in, like whether they engage or don't engage with the audience, like that could mean thousands of dollars to us, or yeah. it could not mean thousands of dollars to us. If they make their own money, then I'm like, Ooh, thank God. <laughs> like, you know, thank God they were a great guest. Yeah. Um, and it's all across the show. It's not just celebrities yeah. and artists, but it's, you know, vendor booths. It's the people bringing cars in. Like if you're not there and working and right. a lot of, a lot of people for these, they'll show up and it's like, this is a party yeah. this weekend and they're not at their booth for three hours when right. the show starts. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, then you'll get, you'll get people who they'll go hard all weekend, but they are there to make money too. Right. And they know it and they'll show up and they'll do it. Or they just think that, well, me having this X thing at my booth, like that'll be enough to bring people. Right. In. And it's like, well, you don't know that. Like, exactly. And what happens if that doesn't happen? Like, then you're going to complain to me about how you didn't yeah. make enough money as you wanted to. And I'm going to be like, well, what write you and like, yeah. Corey will hand out her yeah. surveys and they'll give you an angry review. Yep. <laughs> and it might, it might sound, you know, cold, but I've had that conversation with people in the past where they, they would complain about how they didn't make money. And I'm like, well, it's not my job to make you money. It's my yeah. job to bring people through the door. Yeah. So that you have the opportunity to sell your, your wares to them. And yep. like, if you don't, then that's not on me. Like at some point I'm not responsible for whether or not you sell something. Um, you know, granted getting people through the door is my responsibility, but after that, as like, long as you've you. got the people there, it's yeah. up to them. Yep. Right. Like I keep thinking of us as like a small show, but really like it's, it's growing you know, every year. We're covering probably a good 80,000 or so square feet. Yeah. Uh, of the mall space this year big expansion this year and yeah like we're we're breaking out like into the mall in like the, the mall like hallways because it's like we have so and even now like we have we have enough people on our wait list to do another show like essentially like there last i looked there were like 40 or 50 names on the wait list still two so twin tears like, comic-con yeah. shows a I, year it's crazy. <laughs> when I that's think, what i'm hearing <laughs> yeah yeah it's it, I, I don't even i can't even explain it like we went from you know, years ago to being like, um, it was, it was hard to, to get people booked because like we had to like chase down vendors and, and chase down artist guests and things like that, just because people didn't really know about us. They didn't really know. Um, and you know, when you're doing a two day show, it's hard to get like a comic shop from, you know, two hours away to commit because they have to get a hotel room. They have to get staffing. They have to right. get a, a rent a van to cart a whole bunch of comics. So it's like, I, I under, totally understand all that. So, you know, it's, it's just cool now that we have a lot of people who are just you know, coming every year and putting the faith in us. And like, I like to think of us as like the king of the small shows because yeah. nobody does it better. <laughs> so I've got a question. Yeah. Do it. Three days. When? Uh, next year. No. -uh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Yeah. I think we're doing, we were on the cuffs this year. So, yeah, oh. yeah. yeah, we were, uh, and last year too, I think we were kind of flirting with ideas of doing like a Friday preview night or, um, actually had an idea of like getting a former guest up here this year to do something on Friday night, but I, it never really worked out and I'm still kind of figuring out what to do with that. But, um, yeah, I would love to do like, if, even if we could get, you know, a celebrity guest or something, if they want to promote uh, or not promote, but if they want to do like a Q and a with an old movie, like we could do a, a screening on Friday night and like, you know, that could be part of it. That's could, happening this year, isn't it? Uh, we could do, uh, it might be. 
It might, as oh. of right now, it might be. I thought it was. Yeah, we're still. It, it was, and now it's kind of. Well, I haven't even announced it yet because it's still like. Oh, I don't know. Okay. 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 So if anyone's listening to this in November and it doesn't happen, then that's why. Because it's. I don't know if it's going to happen. <laughs> so well, you know, maybe, that's the way these not. things go. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah. It's. It's just a lot of things happen the last minute, and it really. It. It's, it's really an always moving, always yeah. living beast. It yeah. wreaks havoc on my. <laughs> my anxiety yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like people I, I don't know what people's expectations are of like how the show is run or how things go but i mean i was figuring it out tell us in the comments what you think yeah i was figuring <laughs> it out from last year and like 80 percent of our pre-sale tickets before uh, obviously before the show pre-sale um like it was like 83 percent of the tickets we sold last year were between november 1st and november 8th or 9th or whatever day oh, it was wow. last year so yeah. it was like in that one week from the beginning of November until the show was like 83% of all the tickets that we pre-sold. So it's crazy to like go for 11 months and two weeks and be like, I hope people show up to this thing yeah. <laughs> because I have a lot of money riding on this. And then, you know, then they, all the ticket pre-sales start coming in. I'm like, VIP oh, thank sell God. out in like a day. <laughs> yeah. Like people start buying stuff and I'm like, oh, thank you. And I don't know if that's like, that might be an offshoot of the, the pandemic yeah. stuff too, because sure. people don't, don't really... They're starting to get better at it, but I know in 2022 was the first year we came back and that was really tough because people were, you know, nobody really was making plans that far in advance because it was still like we were fresh off the pandemic yeah. and nobody really knew of like, oh, I don't know if I want to be around crowds and that whole thing. Or if this thing will even yeah. happen. Or... Right, right, right. Or are we going to cancel it last minute? And I'm like, no, no, we, we're not. Yeah. We're, we never do that. It's going to be but, here. <laughs> yeah. So. Has there ever been a cancellation? There've been guest cancellations, but never show cancellations. Never a show yeah. cancellation. Yeah. We actually had a pretty good run of like, uh, maybe five or six shows where we didn't have a guest cancel. And then we finally had one. I was like, ah, well, it was, we were, we were overdue. Yeah. We were way overdue. <laughs> but yeah. But we're Strikes excited. can only last so long. Yeah. yeah. And this year we've got, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, going back to how the expansion and all that, you know, I was talking about vehicles. We don't even have any vehicles this year because we filled the show with so many artists guests. and vendors and and celebrity guests and yeah. things like that. It's like wow, we don't even have room for a car. Yeah. Um, which is a blessing and a curse in a way. But um, you know, a blessing because we don't have to worry about getting I don't want another the ramps and the yeah. doors. Yeah. I don't <laughs> want another car, Kevin, until we can get a the interceptor from Mad Max. <laughs> that would actually be pretty awesome. Yeah. Never again. Nothing yep. else. Why don't you give us a full quick yeah. rundown? Yeah, I'm excited ahead. about that. Um we have you had mentioned Michelle Ang, who was Omega on uh, Omega. Omega. Omega on the Star Wars Bad Batch, which just ended earlier this year, was it? Yeah. Was it last season? Yep. Yeah. Um <clears throat> and I mentioned Dana Snyder and Carrie Means from Aqua Teen Hunger Force mm -hmm. and um, Noah Hathaway, who is a Treyu in um, Never Running Story, and James Duvall, who is a, a kind of a all over the 90s independent movie scene and also was in, um, he was in Donnie Darko, he played mm -hmm. Frank, who wore the bunny costume, and <laughs> he uh, was in... Independence Day. Independence Day. Yeah, and he's gone one of in sixty the, seconds. One of Randy and, Quaid's yeah. kids. Yeah, he that. got to act yep. with uh, with Nicolas Cage, and that's all I'm going to ask about. Yeah, yeah. we're your only talking. <laughs> we're only talking about Nicolas <laughs> yep. Cage. So if you wanted to hear anything about any other movie, yeah. too bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> any eighty years or nineties kids. Like if you just Googled James Duvall, you'd be like, oh yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. Like I remember him from yep. this, this, and this. And James is also, I mean, knock on wood, nothing changes, but he's planning on doing photo ops with the bunny costume. Oh, that's sick. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's really cool. So that's again going back to. What we were talking about that's a guest who knows yeah what he's how, doing. To, how yeah. to work his crowd yeah. like he knows what he's there for so that's super cool he said to make that scratch <laughs> <laughs> well not just that he's yeah. make making yeah. people happy that's the that's the whole point for sure but yeah ton of it's artists guests ton of, ton of celebrity guests it's yep. all on the twin tears comic con website yeah a lot of a lot of artist guests we tried to uh bring back for this year for the the big 10th anniversary mm -hmm. um koi fam's coming back uh scott hannah we have for the first time uh scott hannah you know is a pretty storied legendary anchor um and then we have bill morrison who was the um i think the creative officer for bongo comics for forever so he did um basically all <laughs> he had his name attached to basically every simpsons comic book that was ever put out between you know uh, like a 20 or 30 year span or whatever it was hmm. but um so that's going to be pretty great and then you know uh, uh ethan young i, I think we mentioned yeah. steve ellis we know ethan um 
yeah, yeah it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be great we've got so many cool people we have zia adams coming who's um neil adams daughter and she's a an amazing colorist and artist and it's just you know it, it's gonna be the coolest show yeah yeah, yeah. And, and that's just the people who like again going behind the scenes here like there's so many artists and so many people that i send emails to and reach out to and i don't hear back from them or i get no's like you don't even know how many people i contacted that i've heard back from or that i haven't heard back yeah. from like these are the ones that said yes like but last so year many. um was the tom savini like maybe day of he'll show up yeah. <laughs> i think that's going on like this might be the third year we've been working on that because yeah. i think in 2022 we were gonna get tom savini and then something came up. There was like a family thing that he couldn't make it. And then I've been like trying yeah, they back have like, like every knee year, I'm like, hey, Tom. or something this like, last year. Something like then... that. Yeah. I was like, hey, Tom, hey, Tom. Because like, you're just in PA. You want to drive up? But yeah, it, it hasn't happened. And I reached out to James O'Barr again, but I, had, I didn't hear back from him. And I reached out to, you know, an agency that was, you know, representing him. And I didn't hear back from these people. So it's like, it, these things happen. But who knows? I mean, as we're recording this, we still have what, three and a half ish yeah. weeks. So it's like, you never know. One of these agents might Pretty be much. like, he can make it. And yeah. you know, this <laughs> whole part of the podcast should just be cut out if that's the case. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, it's Hey, this fun. is people getting to experience the process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there's, uh, on, the, on the flip side, there's so many celebrity guests that we, that I ask for that I, I reach out to agents and it's always like, it'd be cool to have them, but it's hard to do. You know, yeah. we, we get somebody who's like, oh, he's a $50,000 guarantee. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> maybe <laughs> next year. Oh. We're switching I, to three days. I, yeah. Yeah. I got to find some sponsors to help me cover that so that I feel comfortable about that. Hey there, dipshits. It's me, Joey, a.k.a. Slooty Mage. I'm Hunter, voice of Hunter Taylor. And I'm Carter Deagle Eagle. We're older, older and dumber. dumber. Every Friday, we drop wisdom, humor, and a whole lot of nonsense. You won't want to miss it. Become a patron today for as low as $5 a month. Get early access to all our episodes and exclusive behind-the-scenes looks at all the things we're doing and May's super secret editing notes. Shout out to our awesome dipshits. Your support really helps keep this madness going. Join the crew. Be a dipshit. It's an exclusive club and you're invited. Don't dipshits mark your calendar every Friday for a dose of older and dumber craziness. See you there. Fade to black. Oh. On my stand. Fade to black. <laughs> <laughs>